you guys. Uh, uh, this is a very special week for her chronicles. I have my idol here next to me to the right. Billy Idol's here. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I have Anthony. Ant. I even copy and pasted your bio from your website today. Ugh, That's how much I studied. Ant. All right, Ant. Uh, you've seen him on various uh, television si- uh, television series. You've seen him on VH1. You've seen him on name a couple for you. Or introduce I'm gonna yourself. I'm going to do my own introduction. <laughs> I'm trying this to is a ghetto ass host <laughs> podcast. Uh, last comic standing, I was the host of Celebrity Fit Club. I had a show on Logo called The U.S. of Ant. Tyra Banks, The Tonight Show, Jay Leno, Comics Unleashed. I've been in movies. Yeah, but who cares? Yeah, they it, don't care. See, but that all of this is not even on here. But you, I, I know. It, I remember when we first met. It was, it was really special to me because that's when I was like really starting to engage in comedy. And I remember it you just, engaged like in comedy. It wasn't like, like I was you married. Doing, it yes, that's hilarious. Well, yeah, you were there that night, and I was just like, I felt so empowered watching you perform because you do something that I don't. I'm a strong woman in comedy. <laughs> You're a very strong woman. Yeah, no, it's true. You you have this thing with audience. You engage so well with the audience. Like I wish that's my I could favorite feed part. Off. Yeah. My favorite part is throwing my act out the window and talking to the crowd. That's the best thing. And you slay at it. I You're love it. so good at it. I love it. You have to be really quick witted to do it though. Yeah. Because you're really dancing with fire because if you if the audience is funnier than you, that's not good. Yeah. Right? No, I know. That's not good. No. Yeah. No, it happened it, I got heckled recently. What'd they say to you? Oh God. I, I have this joke where You're I, a bitch. <laughs> no, where I compare Can we swear. Yeah, of course. Swear as much as you want. It's encouraged. Okay, I don't want to like, because it's, you know, I like to use it for effect. Oh, okay. But I have this joke where I compare Raider fans to Trump supporters. And this lady was an obvious Trump, uh, Raider fan. How is fan. she obvious? Because she just. Was she wearing silver and black? I, she pretty close. Yeah. She was like, I'm from Oakland. That's not funny. And I was and like. she was black, apparently. Yeah, of course. Of the... Yeah, of course. I had to just, I didn't want to say that, but yeah, she was Why? black. Why? <sighs> PC? Trying to be PC. If someone's black, they're black. What's not <laughs> What's not PC about that? That's true. But yeah, she was right? black. Maria Isabel Munoz Zuniga. <laughs> she can't. Even, it's my aunt from Chile. She probably doesn't even understand. Is that really? Yet. Hola. Como esta usted? <laughs> I love that. Like only your. She left the room. Oh God. Your aunt even left. This 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 is going great. This is going great. This We've is... got, we're down to one person. It'll it'll get it'll get more on fire. Jimmy Shin from the oh, Shindig. Oh hey, what's up, Jimmy? Um, no, so yeah, so she told me, oh, not funny, and then I was like, oh, that's funny. I was like, this is an American Idol, and you're not Simon Cowell, and she goes, that's funny. I'm like, see, you're doing it again. That's hilarious. <laughs> you should talk about that. Yeah, no, I've tried. It's funny. Yeah. Um, but let's get back to the point. I, I remember asking you specifically, I'm like, is there anything in particular you want to discuss? Cause you know, I admire you so much. I'm like, you take over the conversation and you're like, I want to talk about recovery. I love it. Okay. It saved my life. It did. So how long have you been sober? I will be six on April 20th. April 420. Four, <laughs> really? Is my sober date. 420 was your sober 420 date. 420 is my sober date. And, uh, I'd been sober before. I had 10 years clean, and I relapsed after a long stint of recovery. But I put a lot of things in front of my recovery. I didn't take it seriously towards the end of that 10-year run. Um. So I put the boyfriend ahead. I put money, the career, houses, fame, all that crap ahead. And what happened was is I lost my connection to what was really important, which is the recovery. Because without the recovery, I don't have any of that stuff. And... I lost my recovery, and I was stripped of all of those things. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if you don't mind me asking, what was your personal, like, I guess, substance of choice? So was it drinking? Was it other drugs? You don't have to keep saying, if you don't mind me asking. You oh. can ask whatever you want. All right. What Crystal was your... methamphetamine and heroin and alcohol. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I See, I, I thought it would have just been something simple like Coke and drinking. I didn't think, wow, that's... I would never. I love that you think Coke and drinking is not that bad. Well, I guess. Are you on Coke? Oh yes. Have you done Coke? I've only done Coke three times. You know how many times you've done it? You are such not a drug addict. Yeah. 
the fact that you know how many times you've done it. I've done it like three times in a minute. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I remember just doing it at a friend's birthday party, and then I got a really bad sinus infection. I couldn't do it again. It's like the most loser reason why you can't do coke. I get sinus infections. If you keep doing coke, though, you can just snort right through the sinus infection. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that proof? You got to do it until blood starts like pouring out of your nose, and even then, you suck the blood up because there's coke in it. Oh my god. Yeah, that already. But th- then again, like I'm a nurse, I can't, you know, engage in stuff like that. Even if I get Would caught you with lose a DUI, your license? absolutely. If I even get a DUI, even when a point over, my license is revoked forever. Forever. Not true. Well, no, they you have can, a program you can... called diversion for nurses. No, but you could fight it in court, but it's really hard now. It's or you can go through the nursing program of diversion, which they try to help nurses with problems because some of them have come through treatment. I went to I went into rehab with a nurse. What was it for narcotics or was it for drinking? Opioids. Opioids. Okay. That... I love that that's less bad than alcohol. Because it's more and accessible. And alcohol is legal. It's more accessible, that's the thing. It's so Wait, easy. Opioids are more accessible than alcohol? Yeah, well, in the nursing world, yes. What do you mean? There's a 7-Eleven on every corner and you all have a driver's license. I'm, I mean in the sense that we're around it all the time. Like when I used to work at a nursing home. Have you I have never. No, I never did. Do you want to? Oh, I do. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I would love to try propofil. I'm just, I'm so, I'm so scared of all those things. Like my. Why? Because my mom, like she, she screwed me up when no, I was little. No, maybe it sounds like she did a good job actually. No, she did a great job. Like, thank you, mom. But it was. Is I, your mom in the chat room? Uh, my mom never joins cause, uh. Cause you swear and you say dirty things. Yeah, of course. It's not the Latina thing You're to do. You're a dirty do. girl. I am. I know you are. She knows that though. You look butt, don't you? Oh, uh, I've never done that before. <laughs> are you single? Uh, I'm married. You've never licked your husband's ass? No. Has he asked? Um, you yes, know, when I first met my Why husband, I thought he red? was gay. That's the thing. When I first met my husband, I thought he was gay. Why? Did because... he have a penis in his mouth? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, because he told me he liked to blow dry his hair. And I was like, oh, he's gay. I know. Everybody that's a horror. to blow dry their hair. But not guys. But was he singing Oklahoma while blow drying? That was probably another <laughs> <No>. indicator. <laughs> That's hilarious. But no, my husband just never asked for that. And I was like, and I've tried to put a finger up there. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like. You're like, I've got to, I got to get to the supermarket. I'm trying to finish this. <laughs> right? Yeah. That and is the way to finish it quick. Yeah. And he was like, no, 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 take it out, take it out. And I was like, okay. Well, I, how long was it in before he said take it out? Like 30 No, minutes? no, no. Like the minute I touched his rim, he was like, get off. Like he was not having it. How long have you been married? I've been married since September. But does he play with your uh, back bone? Yeah, that's the funny part. He'll like put a fingertip in, and that's about it. And you won't say stop. No, like would I don't. You let him go further. I would, but he hasn't. I think he's just like he will pushing after the this. <laughs> he definitely will after this. <laughs> I've been curious. It, it's like a button you press, but he hasn't like pressed all the way for the elevator to go up. I don't know. Would the elevator go up if he did? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Is he watching this live? Uh, no, no, he never watches it. Because you're a dirty girl. Exactly. And he knows you talk about him. Yeah, he knows. We, we... What's his name? <laughs> his name is Chris. Chris? Yeah. He's gay. <laughs> that name alone. <laughs> All gay men are named Mark, Chris, or Steve. See, maybe That's I was right. That's from the movie Steel Magnolias. I think you might be the first step into my divorce now. No, don't. <laughs> you made me realize he's you gay. You should totally stay. <laughs> is the sex good with him? Yeah. You went, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that doesn't sound like good sex. Do you no, still it's... have it after how many years of marriage? Uh, well, since September, how many months of marriage? October, November, December, January, February. Five months. Yeah. But you had, we, it you was were having passionate sex with him first. before you got married, weren't the, you? The problem is we don't have sex as often as I'd like to. Oh, you're the more sexual in the relationship. Yeah, because There's always one. Yeah, because he works like 50, 60 hour weeks. He's tired and I'm like, come on, let's go. And he's like, get off of me. Like, I'm just like, what? Like, Does he have a big one? He's Filipino. So no. Yeah. Damn. I know. And I used to love like. Big ones. Yes. Like bigger than this microphone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. I like the big ones. Like I, I, I like the medium and the little ones too, but the big ones really My ex do was it. black and Mexican. and He's Blexican? He was Blexican. So Blexican. And it was perfect. It was bigger than this microphone. And that was the reason I stayed. That because was the reason I stayed. Even though he was hitting you and stealing your money and using your <laughs> credit report. <laughs> yep. See how non-PC we can be? Yeah, this I is so great. Black I feel like cracks. this is freedom now. This is so much more freedom now. Because you're with a Filipino man? Uh, no, because you're making me open up now to not be Literally, PC. I'm opening up your asshole for your boyfriend to fuck it. <laughs> yes. You should go up to the second floor, Chris. <laughs> 
go up to the. There he is, Christopher James. No, that's not him. Is that a different Chris? He's just saying hi. Hi, Christopher James. All right. Well, getting back to recovery. I love that we've been talking about getting <laughs> fucked up the butt. Now we're back to recovery. We're going to go back to recovery. Okay. But what was. Okay. So when did you start drinking? <clears throat> My first drink I took when I was just a little little kid because my grandmother used to give us a shot and sugar well yeah because you're greek sleep right but the first drink by choice of my own i was 11 and my wow. friend richie scalfani stole a playboy magazine from his dad and a six pack of mick light and my friend nick uh nick greeby mike paquin richie scalfani and myself went into my tree fort and uh we opened up those beers and i remember the feeling of wow that invisible wall that separated me from them disappeared after the second beer and i liked it Wow. And then they opened up that Playboy magazine, and oh, they were like, "Look at those! Look at that!" And I'm like, "Look at her manicure!" Because that's <laughs> why are we looking at? Look that at her hair. hair thing? Back then, the women had hair. Oh, of course, they had thick vagine. hair. Oh yeah, that's on their vagine. What happened? And I'm like, to why that? is she looking for her checkbook on the beach? She's naked. <laughs> I didn't even understand that in Playboy. But yeah, that was the first time I took a drink by choice, and that's where the sort of changing how I felt became of paramount concern to me. So that early on, you already knew that it was kind of a problem. No, I didn't. I, I knew that it was something I wanted to feel for the rest of my life. Okay. At what, I knew it was my solution. Okay. At what age did you become a comic exactly? Like you're like, I need to do this. Or I remember uh, you briefly July telling me. 7th, 1993. Okay. And how old were you then? Why don't you ask me what I weigh next to? <laughs> no, I'm just. <laughs> I wasn't this age. That's how old I was. <laughs> I was younger. Okay. But do you think that comedy made you drink more or drink less? Because I find for myself that ever since I started comedy, like I need to smoke weed before I go to bed because it I have so much adrenaline from getting off the stage. And sometimes I want to think of new tags on my jokes that and, I'll stay up all night. weed helps that? Weed ho- does help. Yeah. I, I tried. Do you know uh, what else helps for me? Meditation. Really? Mm-hmm. I did a sound bath actually on Saturday and I loved it. There you go. But I was high. But you <laughs> That defeated the entire <laughs> purpose of being in the moment. Basically. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's just So me. I don't use substances to, to come down. One, I get off stage, I don't care anymore. Really? Like, I kill, I don't care, I bomb, I don't care. I don't care. I just go to help the audience for 45, if I'm doing a long set, for 45 minutes, forget their pain. So it isn't even about me anymore. It's just about them. So when I get off stage... It wasn't about me anyway. Well, I never thought of it that them. way. So if I go looking to like do really good, and if I go looking going, they have to like me, and they've got these jokes have to work, it never does. But if I go with the attitude of, well, how can I give to the audience? Because they paid to see me, or if I'm doing a free show even, they have put their lives on hold for an hour, and they're going through a lot of crap. I'm not the only one affected by what's happening in the world, so are they. And I have a job to do, and the job I have to do is... Get them to forget their pain for an hour, whatever that is. People have come up to me and they're like, my son died a year ago and I haven't laughed this hard. This is the first time I've laughed. That's why I do comedy now, not for the accolades and not for the money. And I do it because I was given this gift and this gift is on loan. I don't get to take it with me and I don't get to give it away except when I'm on stage for however long I'm on stage and I believe in God and God has said, this is the gift. It's on loan and I can take it from you any minute. So use wow. it wisely. Wow. That, that just changed my perspective 100% on, on the way I look at going out to an audience now. Yeah. If you go to the, if you go up there looking like it's all about me, you'll get success and stuff. But if you go and, uh, hi, hi, Dalen. I don't. <laughs> and if you go and you make it, um, about them, you'll have more fun too. And you'll be more in the moment. And comedy is about confidence, timing, and being in the moment. You're right. Wow. That I oh, that just changed a lot of things for me. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's that little You're welcome. <laughs> but again, did comedy make it did comedy make drinking worse in the long run? Yes. Did, yeah? Of course it did. Well one, you're in a club where there's a two drink minimum And when you start in comedy, when you're like the opening act or the middle act, the feature, you have to promote the drink. So they make you the drink and they want you to try it so that Mm -hmm. you can sell it. Okay. You know, there's a drink special and all that other crap. Of course. 
Uh, and then when you start getting a name for yourself, the audience, they want you to hang out with them after the show. Of course. So you do that. And, and then they buy you drinks. They buy you drinks and you don't want to be rude or, or you, at that point I was already in my alcoholism. I was expecting it. I was like, you're going to stay after if you pay for beers. Mm -hmm. It's true. No, now I, I don't drink at comedy shows while I'm there, obviously, because I have to drive. And now I, I, some comics make fun of me. I have tea right before I go on stage. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, you think you're so fancy? I'm like, no, I'm just having tea to relax. Why would tea make you fancy? I don't know. I think it's a British thing. People just associate tea with British people. Well, because. And maybe white privilege, the white privilege that I have. All the tea in China. I don't know. Tea was discovered in China, not England. I know, but whenever you think of tea, don't you think like of a little British setting, not necessarily China? No, I think of Starbucks overcharging me for mine because <laughs> I drink tea every day. I love you. Um, We've already done the first page of questions. No, God, no. This, this is just me like flowing and all that stuff. All right. So now that you've been a recovery uh, in recovery for so long, do you think weed should be legal? Yes or no? I don't have an opinion on it. For me, I can't do weed because weed leads to heroin and crystal meth. Okay. For you, if you can do weed and function and 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 get the work done that you need to do and and perform at your t tip top, who am I to have an opinion about what you should be able to do and not do? Sure. So long as it doesn't hurt somebody else. So my fear with the legalization of marijuana is more like how are we going to patrol it on the streets? Like we have drunk driving laws. Yep. Are we going to have high driving laws? It's I mean, true because you can't measure blood alcohol content yet. There's no way. Well, no, you can measure blood alcohol content easily. There no, but I'm saying there's no weed, weed version. Alcohol. Exactly. Right. So how much THC is in your bloodstream at one one time? I don't know. So that's my only fear is is how do we make sure that people aren't hurting other people? Like you have the right to do whatever you want, but your right stop at the tip of my nose. So if your personal freedom now has killed a loved one of mine because you were high and driving – I have a problem with that. But as far as legalizing it and your ability to access it and get it and do it and pay for it, have at it. Have a great time. I don't really have an opinion either way. Was it harder for you, like, going through your recovery doing comedy? Was it more more of a challenge? Was it, you know, like, were you getting more bitter in the beginning of your recovery or was it more anger? Like, how did you deal with recovery initially? I wasn't happy about the news. I mean, nobody wants to be branded an alcoholic and a junkie, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, of course. Nobody does. No. Um, so I wasn't happy about the news, but as I started the journey of recovery, my life changed and got better. So the, for me, I set out to sort of prove that I wasn't really an alcoholic or, a, you know, a heroin addict. Mm hmm and then all I ended up doing was proving that I was, but I also proved to myself that it wasn't a death sentence and it wasn't a stigma that I'd have to carry if I just started living a better life and doing the right thing and started living in my integrity. And once I started doing that, people's attitudes about me changed. Okay. I know that AA has, you kind of have to develop a relationship with God. I don't know if you had that before Well, that's what they do in or, AA, I guess. Yeah. Well, were you in AA? Well, I don't really want to talk about specifics like that mm -hmm. out of respect for different programs. Of course. So, um, but in AA, they do talk about God a lot mm -hmm. or a higher power. In Buddhist recovery, uh, you know, there are eight principles of recovery. There's also rational recovery that people do. Okay. You know, and some people try a mixture of all of them. So I don't really want to get too specific about things. Mm -hmm. I just like to talk about recovery in general. Okay. Cause yeah, I, anytime I think about recovery, the only thing I think of is AA. I didn't even know that there was different forms of recovery. Oh yeah. There's Buddhist recovery. There's rational recovery. There's just complete abstinence. People, they call it white knuckling it. Um, there's a lot of different ways that people can get clean and sober without, you know, being in one, you know, I think that AA probably has the biggest success rate. Okay. You know, from what I've read. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I've dealt with my patients. I've always just given them resources for AA, but now I feel like there's even more resources they can look on to give them to, well, to give them you as know, well. because one thing might not work, you know, it's not cookie cutter. One thing doesn't work for everybody. Mm -hmm. And if one thing doesn't work for everybody, you got to try a couple different things. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Churches have programs that get you sober. The Salvation Army has a program that gets people sober. That I knew because I know that we have a resource for our patients that are in heavily in substance abuse and the Salvation Army will give them housing and everything like that as long as they go through recovery. But they also like kind of leeway them into AA as well. Mm. So I know I've done that before with one patient, but I didn't know there was like all these different Yeah, there are different spectrum. ways to get sober. Many different ways to get wow. sober. Wow. Okay. That's really good to but know. But I think the key to all of them is, is the person has to be willing. Of course. You have to be willing. It's not going to work if someone else wants it for you. You have to want it for you, no matter what path you take. Because if you don't want it, no matter what you choose, it isn't going to work for you. You have to really, for me, I had to admit to my core that I had a problem with this thing. So, you know, alcoholism is a self-diagnosed disease that tells you you don't have it. Wow. Yeah. So you're in this odd, you're in it, but your disease is telling you you don't have it. Yeah. So you're fighting an inner demon telling All you not. All the time. It's saying, you don't have a problem. You it's don't okay. have a problem. Just have another one. Yeah, just have a drink. Yeah. And have another. And or have another. you can go 30 days and be, you know, dry. And then all of a sudden your disease tells you, see, you did it for 30 days. You must not really have a problem. And then it picks right up where it left off. And then you're t- two times as bad. Wow. Yeah. Could I ask you a personal question? You, you don't, don't have, have to, to keep answer. asking. But it, this is personal. What was your, before the six years, what was your, I guess the, the bottom, what, what, what was your bottom? What was my bottom? Yeah. Um, the conversation I had with my parents when my mom and my dad said, I will, we will never come and visit you ever again because you treat us like garbage. Wow. And then, um, that really hit me hard. And then probably the other one was when my sister came to me and said, we asked you to be the godfather of our kids, but we don't want you anywhere near our kids. And if you even come to their christening, we will call the police. And you know what? Those were two consequences I was unwilling to accept. I was willing to accept a lot of consequences. I had been fired from Celebrity Fit Club for doing drugs. I've lost lot of not lost. I've given away lots of jobs because of my disease. But those were two consequences I was absolutely unwilling to accept. I did not want to not have access to my nieces because I they're they, I want to put them in the blender and drink them. They're so cute. <laughs> um, and I was not willing to live without my parents in my life because I love them. Yeah. So those were two consequences I was unwilling to. So what happens is is you hit a bottom when you stop digging. And when those consequences were put to me, I stopped digging. Wow. It's weird because, I mean, I was hosting Celebrity Fit Club. I was making $55,000 an episode. And that didn't stop me from using. Oh, my God. Oh, what I would do with that money. (laughs) What would you do with it? Would you buy a dildo to get fucked up the ass? Probably. Like Chris? Chris wouldn't do it, so I'd be doing myself. (laughs) You know, we have five viewers. I am just drawing. <laughs> I look at me, just pulling them in. Oh, no, trust me. We get way more listeners on our Chronicles podcast. You do? How many do you get? We have about, the first one was about 1,500 plays, and then the second one about 1,600, so it's been slowly, slowly wow. climbing. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Because the Twitter feed kind of does it itself, and then, you know, thanks to the infamous Chronicles, which is where I was kind of like fathered into to do my own podcast, they've been really helping me promote and been doing a fantastic job of it and that was a great plug for them yeah the infamous chronicles yes are you infamous yet no infamous is his own person he's the one that runs the show oh, basically okay. so that's his name that he goes or alias that he goes by is that the guy you called before the podcast to go hey what format do we yes okay he's the one yeah um let's see were you aware okay so look for- dalen invited all of my high school to come to this podcast and that's so sweet. Okay. I have the best. The you have the best friends. I have I sh- shitty friends, apparently. Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Even your mom won't tune into this podcast. My mom is, just doesn't. That's because you're a dirty girl. No. Nope. She just doesn't want to know that her daughter does that. Yeah, exactly. And my mom just doesn't get it. Like, she she speaks English, but, like, she doesn't get English humor sometimes. Like, she'll laugh and be like, ha But it's not like. That sounds like my audience. <laughs> 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 that is not true. I've seen you kill plenty of times. You have? Yes. Plenty. I've done well. Yes. I've done well. God's been very good to me. And he has. Because I, 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 again, I, I admire you a lot because you have a gift that I wish I had, which is to play with the audience more. Well, you have to start developing the gift. You have to try doing it. I know, little by little. 
little by little, but it's not what you actually think. It is, um, I prepare. So I heckle myself. You heckle yourself? I heckle myself. And then I think, what would I say to that person? What would I say to that person? Wow. That's I've, what I do. I've, oh, wow. And then I also, I'll give blood. away another big secret. Yes. I don't really come up with anything off the cuff. I already have everything planned. So I'll look at your diamond ring and I'll go, holy crap, look at that ring. You go get a banana right now and show us where you got that. <laughs> I wrote that years ago. I wrote that gig. So anytime I see a big diamond ring on a woman, or if I see a little diamond ring, I'll go, oh, wow, look, there's even a little place for a diamond in this one. <laughs> right? So everything is pre-written. So if I ask you what you do, I have already in my mind have already come up with if you work at a bank, I have a punchline. If you sell stocks, I have a punchline. If you're a teacher, I have a punchline. If you I love that. That's all I've done is just I've just prepared. But I remember the story you told me about when you got discovered. Can you share that a little bit with the listeners as well? Um well, it depends on what you mean by discovered. Remember you told me that you were a flight attendant? Oh, when I was on an airplane. That yeah. one. And I had a big agent yes. on the plane, and I, Dolly Parton was on the flight. And I had gotten her to get up and sing 9 to 5 on the plane through the speaker PA. She was in first class flying with her sister. And um, I was joking on the PA, and you know, I'm like, maybe there may be 50 ways to leave your lover, but there are only six ways to exit this aircraft. You know, And I was making a crack at <laughs> you. This way before Southwest Airlines ever even existed. Wow. And... Um, he gave me his card. He's like, you're really funny. You should give me a call the next time you're in L.A. Now, uh, whenever I was in L.A., I would stay at my friend Blaine's house, who's an actor uh, and a flight attendant. And um, I emptied my pockets at his house, and he sees the card, and he's like, where'd you get this? And I was like, oh, I had this guy in a plane. I think he was hitting on me. He told me to call him, and I went <laughs> of, course he, of course he well, was hitting on then, you. Back then, I had a full head of hair. I had a little six-pack. I was good, quite good looking. And... Um, my friend Blaine's like, this is a huge agent. You should you should call him. I've, I've wanted a break like this my whole life. So I called him. I went to his office. They put me up on um, stage at the improv, and they invited some people, and the development executives from Fox were there, and I wow. got a development deal. Thank you, Christopher. That's so sweet. Oh, my God. That story is like, that's every comic stream. That's every comic stream. Not necessarily the flight, but just like how quick it went. That's it was Relatively pretty quick, quick, within six months. And then, then I got a pilot, and then the pilot didn't go. And then the WB, which is now called the CW, but it used to be a network called yeah. the WB. With the little frog and everything, right, I remember. Michigan J Frog. Um, they were creating a show called Unhappily Ever After. And Ron Levitt, who co-created Married with Children, um, worked on the, my pilot that didn't get picked up. And he said, I've got this role for you. Will you come and play this role? So for five seasons, I was on the show called Unhappily Ever After. Oh, wow. So I did that. And then from Unhappily Ever After, I did the show called Blame It on Ernie. And then from Blame It on Ernie, I did The Secret Diary of Desmond Pfeiffer for UPN. Uh, and then that got canceled because black people protested the show, saying they were making fun of slavery when really Lincoln Slave was running the White House in the show. Yeah. Um, and from there, uh, Last Comic Standing came around. Wow. And that's the show that really put me on the map. Yeah. Because that was a hit. It in was. The summer. It was the number one show in the summer the year it premiered. And um, that really put me on the map. Yeah. I, that was a great experience. And uh, stressful because I, um, I had relapsed at that point. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you make it towards the final? In the first season, um, I made it to the Las Vegas semifinals, and everybody on the planet thought I was going to be picked, and I didn't. So season two, and this is so interesting because Peter Engel just did um, Heather McDonald's podcast, and he talked about this. Peter Engel created Saved by the Bell, and he created Last Comic Standing. So I wasn't going to audition for the second season because I was devastated that I didn't get in the first time, and I thought, I am not going to be the Susan Lucci of Last Comic Standing, where... You know, hi, my Aunt Tracy's here. Oh, hey, Tracy. Um, I figured I'm not going to be the Susan Lucci of that show. So <laughs> I auditioned. Uh, I wasn't going to audition. And he goes, Aunt, you should audition. I'm like, Peter, I'm not going to audition. He goes like, Aunt, trust me, you should audition. And NBC had told him their biggest mistake for season one was not putting me on the show. Yeah. So I was kind of told that I was a shoe in for season two. So I did. And then I got in. And then season three was the battle of the best. 
Season four, they had me doing Man on the Street for them. Season five, I was a judge with Kathleen Madigan and Alonzo Bowden. Oh, Kathleen Madigan is fantastic. You should have her do your podcast. You think she'll come on? Why not? Uh, I would. I mean, she's not driving a Van Nuys, that's for sure. Oh, no, 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 no. I would, yeah, I would do that any day. I love her. She reminds me, I, I still listen, I listen to her almost every other day. Uh, she reminds me so much of. Did you see Bothering Jesus? No. That's her Netflix special that's out right now. Isn't that what it's called? Oh, well, yeah, I saw that, but I listened to her two specials on Spotify and oh, on Pandora. Okay. Um, Why? Because they're free and you're not paying? No, Spotify Shoot. I pay for. You do? Yes. I pay. But does like, the artists get paid? I'm pretty sure they do. On my residual statements, I never see Spotify. No. Oh, I, actually, no, I do see Spotify. Her Gone Again special. Gone Again special else. is amazing. Is the, it good? Oh, it's so good. And she reminds me so much of, I know this is horrible to say, and if she's listening to me, I'm so sorry, but she reminds me of my mom because she gambles a lot. She smoked a lot and she talks about that. She and how drinks a lot too. And how she talks about her mom, like not really caring. It just reminds me of my mom. We had the best time in England. She's like, hey, nobody wanted to do anything. So the, when we were judges on the show, it was an international search for talent. And uh, Rosalie's like, wait, you're in Van Nuys? <laughs> um, <laughs> no. So Kathleen goes, aunt, you want to go meet the queen? I'm like, Kathleen, like gay people? And she's like, no, like the queen of England. Do you want to go to Buckingham Palace? <laughs> oh, my God. So her and I went to like Buckingham Palace and we roamed around England and we had the best time. She's so much fun. Oh, I love she, you, Kathleen. She's oh, she's phenomenal. Yeah. I, I love her. Um Let's see. You're not sticking to any of these questions. I'm not, actually. It's been really organic. It uh, should be always. If, you're, if this is like so uncomfortable, all these questions. No, they're not uncomfortable. I just want They are for me. I'm the one answering them. <laughs> well, you told me. You're like, surprise me. And I was like, surprise. Surprise. I'm late. Surpri yeah. That was a surprise. That, well, LA traffic I is know. just awful. Yeah. Um, let me see. Let's see. So the progression. Uh, let's see. I think I already asked you that. Uh, okay, so I have a question. So when you got fired from Celebrity Fit Club or leading up to that, you didn't anybody around you tell you, like, your behavior is excessive? No. Stop. I would be at Santa Monica Beach, 95-degree weather, in a black turtleneck and long sleeves to hide my track marks, and nobody ever said, why are you wearing a turtleneck in the summer? But nobody never noticed that you were high. Nobody ever noticed that your nope, behavior was parents, erratic. Even my parents, when they said that they never wanted to see me again, were it was my behavior, but they never, ever thought, are you doing drugs again? They knew something was up, but I think people only want to see what they want to see. And back then I was making so much money. I was making millions of dollars. Oh, my God. You know, people only see what they want to see. That's so true. your agents and your manager, nobody wants to fuck with their income. So yeah. if they piss off the talent, you know, I'll it's fire It's true. Them. I mean, there's there's coworkers, though, and there's family. You know, family is always well, the first one to be in your face. Well, when you're a drug addict, the last thing you do is hang out with friends and family. You isolate. That's true. You hang out with what are called lower companions. So I was hanging out with, like, homeless people, basically. You were hanging out with homeless people? Don't be so shocked. No, I... I, I did this on Howard Stern. I was like, yeah, well, I used to troll for homeless people. You shower them all off and, like, wow, you're actually cute underneath all that crud. And the best <laughs> part about sleeping with the homeless... <laughs> Is in the morning, you just open your front door and go, you're home. You don't even have to give them an Uber. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And if they want breakfast, you're like, it's trash day. You're lucky. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. Not it's all funny. jokes, sir. Apple Orchard. What? I, I don't get it. Apple Orchard. Eh, it's okay. Christopher James. Okay. You're over 25 comments. This is your most commented podcast, according to um, Facebook. I think it is. And I'm very proud of it. It's because I have... I have you on. That's why. And you didn't even promote it, which is awesome. I didn't. Christopher James just sent us hearts. Um, it would have been cute if you... Tracy, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, can they obviously, hear us? Uh, can you, can yeah, you hear of course us? they can hear oh, us. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was the whole point. Oh. The element of surprise. That's why I asked oh you. Oh, my God, my language. I have to clean it up. No, no cleaning. I'm going to. I don't... Because, you know, my niece might click in. Oh, that's true. I right. Think about that. All right. Uh, what is the okay so now in recovery and it's been so long but when people ask you oh like hey do you want to drink because I remember asking you that like, no I'm a recovering addict is do you like does it kind of like make you like upset on the inside like oh I just wish I had one is there ever like that's still that desire mm. a little bit um I was at an event recently 
Okay, when you go to big events, like I'm going to the premiere of Feud, the new FX series. I'm going, Ooh. yeah, uh, the premiere's on March 1st. It's at the Man's Chinese. There's a big after party at the Hollywood Roosevelt. And they'll be walking around with lots of drinks. That's a little bit challenging. Not because I want the drink, but because the attitude of the crowd shifts when they get to that part. And then it becomes uncomfortable for me. Okay. So everybody's present and fun and talking. And then three drinks in, all of a sudden, the mood of the room changes. And then they're drunk and you're not. Yeah. So they're on a different level yeah. that you're not on. And then that then that makes me uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. I don't like to be around drunk people. No, I don't think Even when I does. was drinking, I didn't like being around drunk people. Like whenever I have to babysit, I think it's the most annoying thing on the planet. Like I, Why? I the kids like... you babysit for are drunk? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm always DD, normally. The designated driver? Always okay. for my friends. Because you are a double D. I'm a 34C, actually. You're a C? I'm a C, and you're these stacked. are fake. The, oh, they're fake. They're I was fake. like, because you're stacked. No, these are fake. See, that's another privilege of being gay. Women will show me their breasts. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, this is comfortable for me right now. I don't feel creeped out. I'm like, Why look at these you? boobies. Yeah, because I'm still looking at your eye, <laughs> even though you're pointing at your boobs. That's the real sign of a gay guy. Yes. You're not. Yeah. The sound is terrible, Christopher's saying. Oh, well, I'm sorry. But you can download the podcast when it... Yeah, when you can subscribe to Her Chronicles. I'm trying to make it as loud as possible. Go ahead. Please subscribe to Her Chronicles so you can listen more. Is that available on iTunes? It's available on available iTunes. Available on iTunes. Google Play, all of it. <laughs> How do you get it on Google Play? Google Play? Uh, I can ask Jay for that. Will you ask? Please. Of yeah. course. Absolutely. Um, let's see. So you hung out with homeless people. Was that ever... Did that ever... That didn't even dawn on you that as you were having being dangerous? A yes. No. No? No, because homeless people have good drugs. Wow. I didn't even think of that. Oh, my gosh. This is this is a much better Hi, interview Sean. Than, I was, than I thought it was going to be. Hi, Sean Rockery. Um, Just joined. Aunt, I love you. So proud of you, my friend. Oh, thanks, Lillian. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see. Do you remember at any point, how can I say this? Like what your thoughts were, like when you, like when you knew really bad that it was a problem yourself. Besides the quitting, besides your family, was there anything that your inner voice was saying, like I have to stop, I have to? Was it a daily all the thing? time? Yeah, all the time. At one point, I did. Uh, I remember when I first started shooting heroin, a little voice said, "If you cross this line, you may never come back." But I ignored it. That little voice is God's voice. I always think that little voice. Is, is God always talking. And it has never lied to me. It's that voice that says, aunt, you're in a school zone with children present. You're doing 75. Slow down. And then you don't listen to it and you get pulled over. Yeah. And you're like, God, I wish I'd listened to that little voice. Right. How many times have you said that? So many times. So many times. So that little voice said, if you do this, you are going to cross a line that you may never come back from. And I did it anyway, because I didn't care about consequences. Those consequences Oh my god! How old were you when you first started heroin? Um, thirty-two, probably. Thirty-two. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like go. Oh, I gotta remember this day. <laughs> the first time I shot. Well, up. of course. But wait a minute, I didn't start shooting it initially. Initially, I snorted it, and then I smoked it, and then I graduated to shooting it, and then I graduated to meth, and then I started mixing meth and heroin. Meth and heroin. Speed balls. Yeah. Isn't that like an upper and a downer? Mm -hmm. So it just balances you out. It just makes me like this. <laughs> I know. I know. One time, I, I think the first time I ever did that, I was really drunk in Vegas. This is the first time I started. Co I ever did coke, and my friend gave me coke, and I was hammered. I was hammered beyond belief. And it brought you back from being hammered. And I was just sober. I'm like, this is bullshit. Why did I even do cocaine? This is horrible. Like, mind you, it was really good at cocaine. Are you sure you did it right? I'm. I did the whole Michelle Pfeiffer Scarface thing. Like, I, I, or at least what I played in my head, and but it just, I was like, was it as glamorous as you thought? No, I just felt see you're such a normie. People that don't have a problem. Um, yes, Christopher, I've partied with Richie Rich and lots of <laughs> lots of club kids. Michael <laughs> Alleg. Um, uh, that's what just makes you a normie. Is that that you could just walk away from it? I can't. Yeah, to this like day I can't. So what do I do? I avoid situations that put me in contact with drugs. Yeah, well, that's a smart thing. That's a really, really smart thing. I love my recovery, and it, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And that do was you, not always the case. Do you feel like in recovery you have a stronger relationship with God than when you're an uh, addict? I'm so connected. Yeah? 
I am so connected. I used to be embarrassed talking about God. I would never do it. But now I don't have a problem at all. I believe in God. I love God. God loves me. You know, the creator of everything stopped what he was doing one day, stopped making moons and stars in the sky and grains of sand on the beach and made me. Wow. Yeah. So that's a pretty big responsibility. You have just been a, a an energy of knowledge today. Honestly, everything that you've said, you know, I'm like absorbing like a sponge. Well, that's so sweet. It, no, it, this is my view. No, I know. But like I'm in a phase in my life where I I do believe in God and I've been praying every night because I've been going through a rough time in my life. What's the rough time? Um, My grandmother is currently going through stage three liver cancer mm-hmm. and it is I don't know where the road is going. I know it doesn't look good. And every for who her for her. Why not? Because I see a change, and I see the same change that I did with my father. My Uh father passed away when I was 12. Do you think your dad's in a better place or a worse place? He's in a better place, but... So then it sounds like the road led to someplace pretty amazing. No, I know. And if it wasn't for those losses, I wouldn't be the person that I am. I would have never became a nurse if it wasn't for my father. Right. My dad died of brain cancer. It'll be three years, March 17th. And... um, it changes you. It does. It does change you. But if you look at it from a selfish perspective about how it's affecting your life, you can get down pretty simple. Yeah. You, you can get down, you get into a pity party, and you know life can get really difficult. But if you look at it from a place of, I was taught by this man who I so respect named J.W., and he taught me the principle of small price to pay. So if God had come to you when you were one years old, and said, I'm going to introduce you to this woman. She's going to be your grandmother. And she's going to be this most amazing woman in your life. But when you are, how old are you? 26. But when you're 26, I'm going to take her from you. Do you still want to meet her? Of course. Small price to pay. It's the price of admission. It's a small price to pay, right? You had her for 26 years, and she was a pretty fucking amazing woman. She's so, she's still amazing. Like, she's like. Is she going to log in now that she, now that no, we're No, she about doesn't, her? she doesn't understand much English. And she's just, she's so funny and she doesn't know why. Like she's. That she's funny? She's very funny. And like, I'm starting to realize I kind of get it from her. I get it from my mom. My mom, she says things where I'm just like, oh my God, you still have it. She told me, my sister's pregnant and we didn't know the sex of the baby. And she's in the hospital, like all sick. And she goes to my sister and she goes, oh my God, you're carrying a girl. And my sister got like all like right excited, excited. And she goes, "Why?" And she goes, "Cause you're so ugly right now, and girls steal your beauty. But don't worry, you'll get That's it back." Hilarious! And I'm like, oh my god! Like yes! Like I and in my mind, I'm like <laughs> funny. Like it's, it's and I can't say anything because like I That's know. So, now see how beautiful that is. Like <laughs> yeah. my mother, Celebrity Fit Club. I was gaining so much weight at one point in season four. They came to me and said, "You need to lose weight. You're getting fatter than the celebrities." And I said, "Okay." <laughs> So I went on this major crash diet and I lost 42 pounds and the show premiered and I called my mom and I said, did you see the show? And she goes, yeah, you look heavy. I was like, well, mom, well, the camera adds 10 pounds. And she goes, how many cameras they shoot you with? <laughs> and I was like, wow, I fell out of your vagina. <laughs> what did my, my grandma said this to me? Like, she has these endearing terminologies for me. Like what? Puta? She calls me cara puta, which means slut face. Oh. And I'm just like, oh. Cara puta. Cara puta. It sounds like a dessert. I love the cara puta <laughs> and a side of. In, well, in Tagalog, it means, it's, it means pastry. Puta means pastry. That's horrible. I know. <laughs> I'll have two putas, please. Yeah. And then two whores. My jump husband out sometimes was like, counter. can I have some of your puta? I'm like, don't say that. That's rude. He calls your pussy pastry? Mm, sometimes. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> it's a pastry. Sweet. It's, is it really? <laughs> I mean. Not all girls are. I mean, I've heard from other guys that it tastes like nickels. I have no idea. Your pussy tastes like nickels? No, that pussy in general tastes like nickels. Like a mouthful of nickels, the money? Yeah. The currency? Like, yeah. Who's putting nickels in their mouth? Exactly what I said. But That's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> well, I think your pussy tastes like a mouthful of quarters. <laughs> At least I'm a higher currency. Right. <laughs> uh, No, but yeah, she... I thought it would change when she got sick that she's going to be like nicer. No, that's not the point at all. She woke up from her procedure 
And she's like, oh, my cara puta's here. And I'm just like, don't say that. There's people here that speak Spanish. This is just <laughs> inappropriate. This is my little, my, my pussy face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, this has been an amazing episode of Her Chronicles. We're done. That's so, wow, that ends so abruptly. Oh, uh, I know. Look, you've got 50 comments. See, uh, I'm actually really excited to read all of them. I can't wait. Puff pastry. Puff pastry. Oh. Puff pastry. They're talking about that. that I sweetness. know what they're talking about. <laughs> Cherry filled. Ugh. Nickel, I'm gonna vomit. Nickel I'm gonna filled. vomit. And then Aunt vomited at the end of the podcast. It was really spectacular. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's going to be it for Her Chronicles. I want to thank my guest again, Ant, for coming. You really have been... It's been wonderful. It's been amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Tune in next week. Thanks, you guys. Bye.